Welcome, everybody. We are going to be looking a little bit uh, more in depth to the Dell S2721 DGF. Did an unboxing for this little guy and uh, have been using it for about three weeks now, almost a month. So I've gotten to kind of mess around with it, mostly a lot of uh, school and work on it, but some gaming as well. So first I wanted to start with the design here. Now this is one of the things that we, we kind of touched base on a little bit last time. And I wanted to start with the back here. So as you guys can see, there's a nice blue uh, light. It is not RGB like I had thought before, but that's okay. It is a nice little blue kind of accent lighting there. Not too crazy. You can turn it off and I'll show you guys how that works. The lampshade kind of design that I had talked about previously, apparently these are vents. So it basically just allow the heat from inside of the monitor to escape. You also have some on the top and then some on the side here as well as on the bottom. So really well ventilated. I haven't noticed any issues with heat at all. I know some monitors might get a little bit warm when uh, you have them on full brightness for a long time. That has not been the issue here at all or an issue here at all, I should say. Uh, but yeah, so let me go ahead and flip this guy around. Nice little Dell logo there. So one thing I will do before I flip this around, is I want to talk a little bit about the base. One of the questions that I had was on dimensions. So as far as the base goes, from the desk all the way up to the top here, that's only about 14 and a half inches high. So it's not too bad for people outside of America. That's about 37 centimeters. Obviously, it, it does lift the monitor quite a bit, but it also goes down quite a bit too. Let me flip it around and I'll, I'll go over that with you guys here. <laughs> we got Mr. Redis on the screen there. So a couple things to talk about here. Basically from edge to edge lengthwise, you're looking at about 24 and maybe about a quarter inch so that's going to be about 62 centimeters, not too bad. And then the height of the actual display is going to be 14 and a quarter inches. One thing that people had questions about was how high the uh, actual display could go. So basically from the bottom all the way up to here and then how low it could go as well. You're looking at a height up to about seven inches from your desk to right here about 18 centimeters and that's the highest it can go the lowest it can go is 1.5 inches so it's actually pretty dang short here it's almost to the desk and that's going to be about four centimeters for everybody out there that's using the metric system I'm sure that'll be helpful so just a quick overview a couple other things that i can talk about as far as the design here we're looking at 14 and a half inches tall for the stand from the Corners here, that's going to be about 11 inches wide, which is about 28 centimeters. This is all stuff that we've already kind of covered, but you got your power button right here. You got the one, two, three, four buttons, as well as the joystick. And then the joystick is going to be what's going to allow you to control your settings, which we are going to cover. So don't worry about that. Stay tuned till the end. So the first thing I wanted to do before we actually move forward, uh, somebody had asked me about uh, resolution and getting 4K Netflix working on this. So this display does not have a 4K resolution. The resolution for it is 2560 by 1440. So you're not gonna get any anything bigger than that. Now, if you display 4K content on the screen, it's still gonna be very sharp and crisp. Now, as far as Netflix goes, it seems like they're, they're kind of keeping an eye on what your display is coming in and they will only show you hd content on this guy which is a bit of a bummer to be honest it would be nice to get the full 1440 option there but as that is not an option we just kind of have to live with it it still looks all right if you're using it mainly for media you're probably not going to be as close to it anyway so it's not going to be a big deal but something to keep in mind you can play 4k content on here just not from netflix Another thing that was asked was, how do you test your monitor? So there's a lot of different tests out there. This Azo monitor test here is the one that we're gonna be using right now. All right, so these are uh, pretty 
comprehensive tests. They do show a lot of different things on here. And one thing that you do want to make sure you're doing before you run really any monitor test in general is let your, your display warm up. You know, give it about 30 minutes or so before you actually start testing it. We are good to go. Let's go ahead and run it through its course here. First thing on screen here you guys can see is just a nice test pattern. Uh, this is going to be to kind of check the image quality. You can see that the circle is completely round. Uh, there's no ovalness to it. You can see the uh, kind of the lines there. If I zoom in just a bit, so those all look nice. They look neat. Uh, there's no real issues with them at all. And that's what it's supposed to look like. You're supposed to be able to really make out everything. All the lines should be straight. Now we're going to keep on trucking here. This guy here, this is going to be your dead pixel test. I'm not going to focus on this too much. From what I could find, there was no dead pixels on my display. Now, one thing I will I will say, however, is you guys can kind of see the uniformity of the display here. There's not too much IPS glow. You get the most here on the corners, as usual. For the most part, this is a pretty uniform display. The camera makes it a little bit brighter looking than, than what it actually looks like. This should be basically a perfectly bright black, which you guys can Obviously, this is not black. This is kind of like a darkish gray, and that's what's going to happen with IPS displays. They don't have the contrast high enough to really show true black, like an OLED display, or even close to black, like a VA panel. Uh, but that's okay. There's some other things that you get with IPS that you don't get with those. Now, this is so white and actually so bright that you guys won't be able to really see uh, the full effect on the camera here. I would say this display is a little bit warm, and what that really means is that you're not going to get like that bluish tint to it. It's not like yellow or off white. It's just not very cool. I'm just going to go through these. We've seen them before. There's no dead pixels, no stuck uh, pixels here. You get your green, also very brilliant. You get your blues, pretty good. You get your gray, I believe. Yeah, this is going to be 25, 50, or 75% gray. And I can go through these different tones. You get your 25%, a little darker. You get your 50, which should be right in the middle. And this off you guys can see it. And then you have your 75, which is going to be pretty light. Again, everything looks very, very uniform. There is some backlight bleed, but it's, it's very minimal, especially just in, in regular use. If you're looking for a display that you're just going to be using to watch movies or watch a lot of really dark media in a dark room, I don't recommend this display. But if you're looking to just have something that's going to be very quick, be very good with color, this is going to be a good display for you. This is just a kind of a color distance thing it lets you what the differences look like if you put different colors side by side here or kind of on top of each other you guys can kind of get an idea there no real issues with this at all all right now gradients this is important i'm going to actually bring this all the way down to just eight i can drag along the steps there's 16 there's 32 there's 64 and then if we keep going 128, you can kind of still see, maybe up here, uh, you can see some lines bending kind of up and down. And then once you hit 256, even looking at it and knowing that there's 256 transitions, it's very difficult to discern. Again, you can kind of see it in the grays. All right, this is a test that I can actually zoom in a little bit more for. This is gonna test the sharpness. Of what we got here. Now this is digital zoom, so it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But you guys can see it's actually pretty sharp. Should we zoom in just a little bit? And the sharpness does not go away when you're going from black to white or white to black, which is great. All right, moving on. Here's some viewing angle stuff. I'm not gonna go over this. It would be difficult for me to try to, to show that on video. So let's move on. Now gamma, so this is this is interesting. This, I'm not sure if I'll be able to show on camera either, but we're gonna try it. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to see what the gamma value is for the monitor. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to slide the little slider on the bottom right that you guys can't see anymore. And as I move it to the left, the text is going to get darker. I move it to the right, it's going to get lighter. And once we hit the sweet spot where it's no longer really visible, which for me, eh, maybe one more, 
Yeah, that's that's pretty much as close. You guys can kind of see it. So right now we're at sRGB. Now we're getting too far. Now it's getting brighter. So let's see what the camera thinks. Yeah, so this is at 2.2 uh, gamma is what the camera kind of discerns is very, very close. To my eye, I would say sRGB is going to be a little bit closer to like real world um, use here and uh, my, my eyeballs instead of just the camera. And as I zoomed out, now you guys should not be able to really see much of this, the text here. It's, it's very, very light. It is visible, but it's very, very lightly visible. Okay, response time. I'm not going to worry too much about showing this either. I think what I'm going to do for this instead of trying to show it on here is I will shoot some uh, slow motion video of the high speed response time test or something you guys can kind of see what, what I'm getting there. So moving on. That's that's it for the test. It's a good test. I, I do recommend it. I've used a variety of different ones, but that one seems to work really well. Now uh, we're going to go ahead and move into the display settings. I'm going to go through everything here so you guys can really check out all the options. Uh, I will say, however, that the uh, settings are very similar to my previous cell monitors. So I don't know that they've updated or changes too much too recently. Let me Go ahead and pull this in and then we'll scooch you over a little bit. Okay, so the game option is going to show you uh, different modes. What I'm going to do for this one is I am going to go ahead and zoom back out. Let me see if I can't get a little bit more of a colorful background. There we go. That's a pretty good one. So this is standard FPS, just brightens up the image, gives it more contrast. Maybe a touch warmer, but that's, that's about it. MOBA RTS kind of does the opposite. It goes a little darker, but still with some high contrast. RPG just brightens the MOBA slash RTS a little bit. And then you got your sports. So I think what they're going for with the sports mode is just kind of a more realistic, more muted color. They definitely do look a little bit more like what you would expect in, in nature. And then um, these are all just your customs, uh, game one, two, and three. And then once you get past that, we also have comfort view, which makes it quite a bit warmer. If you look at the video, you can see kind of a yellow hue to the coloring, and that's from the comfort view. This is when you're gonna be using your monitor a lot in a dark space or just for a very long time at warm doesn't look warm at all in comparison to comfort view but it is quite a bit warmer than than cool i'll show you guys here so this is warm and then this is cool and again you can really see the the purple and the blues especially the blues here really cool down and get bluer and almost purpley and then you have your custom color your custom color allows you to go into all kinds of different options here so you have your game which just allows you to adjust how much of the the red, the greens, and the blues. All right, get your offset. So if you want to, for example, make your picture a little bit redder, then you can offset that from 50% to 100%. This just basically gives you a little bit finer adjustment. Get your hue. Uh, this is gonna go all the way from red, green, blue, to also the cyan, magenta, and yellow. So again, giving you a lot more options to adjust things uh, very finely here to be perfectly honest with you guys i haven't done much adjusting to this but here for example if i turn the magenta all the way up you guys can see the color just completely changes um, i'm actually waiting on a um, calibration tool for the monitor so that's why i haven't really messed with it too much because i also haven't even been using it for design or anything just yet so i figured that would just Try it as it comes. And then you have your saturation. This is going to be how saturated or how vivid the color is going to be for each one of these. So, for example, going back to the magenta, since we have a very nice magenta color, if we turn that all the way up, it really kind of gives it almost like a hot pink look to it here. So, you guys can really see the difference. So, those are your adjustments there. We can get out of that and then back into the settings. So, for now, we're going to keep this at standard. No sRGB mode here. 
Um, so it's something to keep in mind if, if you're looking to use this just in the sRGB spectrum. That's not something that's included. Again, uh, I'm going to get a calibration tool hopefully this weekend and I'll, I'll test it out. But that honestly, that would probably be the best bet if you're looking to just work with this in the sRGB uh, color spectrum. Now, the reason for that is because this is a wide color gamut display. This actually has, it covers 98% of the DCI-P3 color coverage, which is about 25% more color gamut than just sRGB. So you're getting about 125% more color gamut coverage here, which is good if you're working with a higher color gamut content, but not always necessary. I and mean, sometimes can be a little bit of a pain depending on what systems you're working on. One thing I will say is that Macs it do tend to handle that a little bit better than uh, uh, PCs do, depending on what you're working on. So keep that in mind. All right, so now we're gonna move forward to the game enhancer mode. So right now it's off. You can turn it on by setting a timer. Uh, if I turn on a timer, it's gonna bring up a timer on the top left-hand corner. I have not used that feature at all, so I don't know if maybe an alarm goes off after the timer's done. I would guess probably not, but there we go. Then we have your frame rate. It does the exact same thing. It's gonna show you your displaced frame rate or the current frame rate on the top left-hand corner. This does update in real time. So um, I shouldn't say it updates like continuously, but it does update to uh, what the display is supposed to be showing. So if I change this refresh rate in the settings, I'll just say 60, boom. You guys can see for 60, frames per second is now updated. That's a good little tool there, especially if you have something that you're not 100% sure. Just take advantage of the full 165 hertz or you're testing out like cables and stuff like that. It's nice to have that on screen so you guys can see what is actually happening and monitor what's happening with your monitor. Ha ha ha. All right, moving on. <laughs> Let's see here. So that is the frame rate under the game enhance mode. And then you also have a display alignment. This just basically puts little red bars on the top and the bottom, and you can use the mini keys to turn this off, but you're, you're essentially just kind of aligning it. Um, it. It's just to make sure that your picture is in the center of the monitor so that you can see the full picture. So something, I guess, I, I haven't had to use it at all, but maybe if you are having some problems with it, um, that's something you can, you can use. And then you have your AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, uh, which you can turn on or off there. This also works G Sync. I'm using it with an uh, NVIDIA card right now. Works just fine. It, it even comes up telling me that it's compatible with it. You guys can see G Sync is on. Um, I have it enabled for full screen mode, and then you can also enable it for windowed and full screen mode here if, if you need to. Okay, so AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, you can turn that off and on. Response time. This is where it gets fun. So, response time by default is fast. It also has a super fast and an extreme mode. Turning them on would do nothing for us here because we're just looking at a static image but if you're running a game or the image moving quickly then you can see the overshoot there which just basically means that like for example if you're looking at a line like this if this is moving to the right or to the left you would get a little bit of a trail or even some bright highlights on front in front of where it was moving to and that's called overshoot thankfully i haven't really ran into that with this display at all which is to be expected the lgs also didn't have any issues with it i would say that fast is probably just fine but super fast works well too once you hit extreme i, I think that's when you start seeing a little bit more of that overshoot and the coronas i think they're called dark stabilizer just basically lets you turn up and down the dark stuff some people like it because you can turn up the, the dark spots when you're playing a game. It's a dark game, so you can see what's coming. I don't know. I don't use it. <laughs> and then you have your hue saturation, uh, which we're not going to mess with in this case, uh, but it, you can mess with those if you are, I believe, in a custom color mode. All right, so we're done with game. Now we get your brightness and contrast. So by default, both of these are 75%. If I turn this all the way up to 100 probably won't do much of anything for the camera because it's going to try to automatically adjust, but it's quite a bit brighter. It's quite a bit brighter. 
closest to the eye. It's something I didn't look up, but I think it gets up to probably about 400, maybe 350 net at full peak brightness. That's a good question. I'm not sure. I will say I have a window in the back here, and this room gets a lot of light during the day. Never had any problems with it. That's brightness and contrast. Actually, let me turn down the brightness just a little bit because it'll be easier to take. You get your input source, pretty straightforward. You get your display port, HDMI 1, 2, auto select, which is on by default, and then you can also reset it. If you're having a lot of problems and you're switching between a lot of different devices, I would say to turn off auto select so you can actually go in here and choose which input source you're using. But other than that, pretty straightforward stuff. Display aspect ratio, so you can change the aspect ratio here to auto, wide, those are the same. Four by three, if you need to use four by three for some reason, white is obviously going to be best. Input color format, you get your RGB or your YPD PR. If I turn that on, it's going to look real weird. So we're going to keep this at RGB. Again, something that I, I haven't used myself, but I know that there are some use cases for the uh, different types of color formats there. Sharpness uh, comes at 50%. You can definitely turn this up a bit, especially if you're using, you know, like 1080p type stuff on there. It will make the, the edges look a little sharper. I don't like it. It kind of looks like artifacting to me. So I keep it at the 50% that it came with. That's pretty much it. Smart HDR. Really haven't done too much with HDR with this at all. Again, I think this is going to be HDR 400 or uh, yeah, HDR 400, which is really not great. <laughs> so I, I typically just leave it off. It's smart HDR. It's not on right now. It just basically is ready and prepped so that if you turn it on or if you're showing HDR content, then it'll, it'll kick in. And then... Audio, this does not have speakers built into it, but it does have a headphone jack. So you can adjust the volume of the headphone jack here. Right now it's at 50, which is great because I've never used it. And then you have your menu. So you can change this from English to Espanol to Francais to Deutsch and all the other stuff. Japanese, Chinese, and it looks like Russian or... I don't know. And then Portuguese. I don't talk about that. Uh, transparency, just for the OSD here. You can go 100%, which is obviously not 100%. 0%, 20% is the default. You got another timer. Oh, the timer for the on screen display. So I'll turn this up a little bit since we're going to be messing with it for a bit longer. All right, personalization. Um, so since there's one, two, three, four different shortcut keys. So it's the bottom three you can customize and then the top one um, right below the joystick is just to exit. Uh, but yeah, so you have your shortcut key one set to preset mode. So if you like to switch preset modes, you can do that. On the fly, uh, you get your shortcut key two set to dark stabilizer. So if you wanna turn up the darkness, you can do that. Uh, shortcut key three is brightness and contrast, which I guess would actually probably be the most useful one. And then you have your power button LED, which you guys can kind of see if I zoom out, currently on right here. So this one, you can either have it um, be on or off during active. This is really handy if you're using this in a dark room and you don't want a bright white light shining in your eyes. I usually keep it on, but you can very easily turn that off. USB is gonna allow you to turn on or off the USB hub while this is in standby. A really good little feature there. And then lighting, let me zoom back in. Lighting is just gonna be that back lighting. So this is with it off. Turn off the lamp there. It's already getting some RGBs from the old desktop that you guys can see the blue in the in the background there but um it's not super crazy bright but it does the job it looks all right okay so that's lighting um part of the personalization there and then the last one others so this is just going to give you some general information you can look at the display information which is showing you the uh, model which again we're just looking at the s2721 dgf here you get your input source you get your current resolution as well as frames per second or hertz that you have the set to and then the capability of the display port so since we are using display port 1.4 here it is showing that on there i'm not sure if this will show hdmi that's a good question so i will check on that and add a comment later but yeah 
So that's your display information. The DDC slash CI, I remember reading about this, but I don't remember what it does. So I don't know what to do. LCD conditioning is on, you can turn it off, excuse me, by default, you can turn it on. You really shouldn't be getting image retention on the screen because of the type of display it is. But if you're really worried about it, or if you're just gonna be showing like a static image, for most of its life, then you can turn that on and it should help. And then finally here we have the firmware, which is just gonna show you what version you're on. Um, I don't believe there's been any updates for it, but you should be able to update it directly with the display utility that uh, Dell provides. And then you have your service tag, that's more for if you're calling in because there's something wrong with it, then they'll ask you for that. And then you can reset everything or reset this back to factory settings. Oh yeah, so that's the OSD in a very long nutshell. Glad we're through it. Let's go ahead and look at some other things here. All right, uh, now that we are all done with OSD, ODS, they're all the same to me. <laughs> now that we're done looking at the menu system, let's just call it that. There's a couple last things we can go over. So again, I just wanted to touch base on the IPS glow as well as the performance of the panel in day-to-day -day use. So two things I, I, I wanna call out are as far as backlight bleed and IPS glow. There's very little here that to, to be seen and I'm going to actually pull up. So this, this gray screen here will get my point across, so to speak. So you can see here, I'm going to use my hand, so you can see that this over here looks a little darker. There's just kind of like a curve of darkness. And then this one as well. And then these are a little bit brighter. Now there's a couple of things going on here. One is the, um, the actual like level of the display compared to the, um, the camera. Okay, so that's a little bit more level. So going back to the gray screen here, again, you can really kind of see what I was talking about. So this corner just has a little bit darker of a shade, whereas this has a bit of a brighter one, as well as this one, with very, very little bit of dark over here. It's not a huge deal. It's definitely not a deal breaker. So this is a good scene. So actually, it looks a bit better on video, to be honest with you. Um, but if you take a look here, Eh, you can you can definitely see the black bars. They almost look kind of grayish up here in the middle here. So yeah, I mean it's it's not perfect by any means, um, but it's pretty dang good, especially if you have some lighting. So there we are. I think that's pretty much it. Covered everything from the design to the uh, on display settings, which I know is the big thing. Resolution, color formats. Oh, there's two questions that were brought up. One of them is the response or the speed uh, to power it on. So completely turned off right now. Turn it back on. One, two, three. About three seconds, maybe three and a half seconds. Very, very quick to turn on. Second thing, unrelated a bit to the monitor, but still something I can show you guys is how I connected to my Mac. All of this has been directly to the desktop that you guys can see to the right of the display here. But because I do a lot of my work on a Mac, for the Mac, what I'm using is a CalDigit Thunderbolt 3 docking solution. So here at the front, we got uh, your little SD card reader, some audio stuff and USB. But really what the the monitor comes into play is going to be this here. So you have your display port and then you have your full speed USB over here. And um, so how this works is I take one of these guys, which is just a Thunderbolt 3 cable, plug it into the back and then take the other end, plug it into the laptop. Easy as that. Everything works through it completely for the monitor. The USB hub uh, works just fine, as well as the um, display port cable there. And there are some adapters uh, that will also work. Uh, the one limitation with this dock is that they do have to be active. So something to keep in mind. So active cable or active display port to HDMI adapter. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna leave it at that. My last couple of thoughts here: great display, really high quality, very good colors. Brightness is adequate, more than adequate for even a bright room. You know, it just handles everything you throw at it just fine. If anything, the only complaint I have is that it's just not enough space for me specifically. I would I would like to have either a second one of these 
or perhaps an ultra wide. But if that's not something that you're looking for, then this is just a great overall monitor for gaming as well as for editing and uh, working, doing regular day-to-day -day work. I'm in college right now, and most of what this uh, monitor has seen is just homework displayed onto it. It's been great for that. You know, watch a lot of videos, a lot of lectures, you get your very thin lip there, so you can still use a webcam on this guy if you need to. Okay, I've talked enough. Thanks, everybody.